Well, another new dining location has opened at City Walk. The Velocicoaster is now officially open at Islands of Adventure, and Jack is back. This is episode 460 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. It is me, it is Lee. I am hosting this one, and with me this week, I have Christopher. Hola. Ah, I saw. She rolled her eyes there because I didn't go with her first. <laughs> also, my good lady wife, Tracy. Yeah, whatever, I love. And to quote Mr. <laughs> Kenneth Leeming from Russia for you, Michelle is not here. She's blessing the rains down in Africa at the moment. So replacing Michelle is our lovely friend, Nicole Hunter. Hello, Nicole. What's going on, everybody? Welcome hey. to your podcast debut. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And this will not be the last time you hear her. Well, that's and good. I mean, she's here for the rest of the episode, too. Lee, yeah. So I'm yeah. And the next one, and another right, guys, one it's soon. Been fun. <laughs> <laughs> it made that sound really sinister. No, because there are plans. <laughs> uh, we already have another two in place where Nicole will be joining uh -huh. us and then others. But anyway. Cool. Right, let's get into it as we always do. I think the first thing we will go to is head over to Seth for Little Things. Hi, this is Seth Kaberski, co-author of The Unofficial Guides, and this week I've got a big list of little things that are new around the Universal Orlando Resort. Let's start off in the parking garage hub, where a new touchless security scanner has been added to the security checkpoint. This is similar to the Evolve touchless scanners used at Walt Disney World, though it comes from a different company. And if you go through it, it should take you a lot less time uh, than using the X-ray baggage scanner. The only problem is that there is only one of them currently, and it is a temporary scanner that is put out and removed, used only for peak times. Keep an eye out for two poles that are set up in the center of the scanning area if you can head towards that, especially first thing in the morning, it should really help you get through security quicker. Once you get inside the park, be sure to pick up one of the new printed guide maps, which includes a brand new map of both parks. The map's been redesigned with some more detail and color, and of course it also now includes the Jurassic World Velocicoaster. In addition, there is an updated rider's guide available from guest services or on the Universal website that gives information for guests with disabilities, along with information that will be helpful for parents to know if their younger riders will be able to experience an attraction. Looking around the theme parks, things have gotten really busy with huge crowds <laughs> yep. coming in in recent weeks, which means it's a good thing that more single rider queues have reopened around the parks. Reign of Kong is now accepting single riders again. However, that line is open intermittently. Ditto for Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Just be warned that the Hagrid single line is susceptible to being shut down when it reaches capacity, and you'll still have to wait in the long line for lockers before you can join the single rider line. The same is true over at the Incredible Hulk, where you must wait through the metal detector line before joining single riders, which greatly diminishes its usefulness. Big crowds in the parks mean long, long waits for quick service dining and outdoor vending carts recently. You can actually wait longer in line for a churro stand than you can for the Velocicoaster ride on many afternoons. <laughs> Hello, Problems yes. with the mobile ordering system seem to be exacerbating this. So if you want to eat while at the Universal theme parks, I highly recommend that you either book a table service reservation or head out to CityWalk where the Fusion Sushi Bar has recently been converted into Bend the Bao, serving various Chinese steamed bun sandwiches. A quick shopping note, if you are looking to get a wand to use in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, prices recently went up. Non-interactive wands are now $55. Jesus. Interactive wands are $59. And limited edition collectible wands have gone up to $75. The easing social distancing restrictions inside the parks mean that some character meet and greets are coming back. In Marvel Superhero Island, characters are now greeting again without masks covering their mouths. And the Spider-Man meet and greet inside the Marvel Alterniverse store has reopened. 
You can also meet the New York City cabbie character again in Universal Studios Florida. His taxi has been moved over near Central Park. And not far from there, there's a temporary photo op promoting the new Fast and Furious 9 film with a car you can take pictures with outside of Kid Zone. Here's some good news on the hotel front. Aventura, the last of the closed Universal Orlando on-site hotels, reopened last week, and they are now using robots to deliver food inside of the Urban Pantry restaurant. And last but definitely not least, we got a big leak of Halloween Horror Nights 30 information this week, confirming that Jack the Clown will be back for the anniversary event. If you're really excited for Jack's return, Halloween Horror Night preview shirts are available in the Five and Dime store at the exit of the Born Stuntacular. They cost $28, and there is a limited supply. Halloween Horror Night tickets are also on sale, though only single night tickets are currently available, with no word yet about frequent fear. And if you are a premier annual pass holder, you might want to head over to the website and start planning the date that you are going to use your complimentary Halloween Horror Nights ticket because this year they are only valid in October on Tuesdays and Wednesday nights, which greatly <laughs> limits the dates on which you can use them. All right, that's all for this time. I'll be back in another couple weeks with more little things from around the Universal Orlando Resort. Until then, you can find the unofficial guide to Universal Orlando at theunofficialguides.com, and you can follow me online at the UG Series on Twitter. Again, a lot to unpack. I want to comment on the same thing that I think Chris kind of wants to comment on, that the normal ones yeah. are $55 mm -hmm. and the interactive ones are only $4 more. Yeah. How does that make any sense? Like, why would you buy a normal one? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's silly at that point. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, there's no reason not to. I still remember buying the kids ones when we first came over with the kids once the wizarding world was open and they were 37 dollars mm. so they've gone up 18 dollars in eight years i'm really kicking myself i still have for not mine buying on, one. we bought ours it's like 20 bucks wow wow, wow. yeah i haven't got one because i i can never decide so yeah that's bit me in the ass they're just <laughs> <laughs> a strange thing aren't they because they're, they're just piece of plastic piece of resin at the end of the day whereas at least you get the interactive ones you get the map with it which is mm. for me worth the money for and then you get more. to use them yeah i don't maybe that's yeah. what they want maybe they're pushing people to not buy the normal ones maybe maybe they'll phase them out Potentially. possibly yeah that's what i was wondering if they were actually going to make it just not even an option just everything is interactive mm. yeah and with enough fire whiskeys, man, you're a real wizard. <laughs> <laughs> I was having a little I mean, smile to myself because <laughs> it's a one prices of raised. I was like, oh, there's a new spell, Costamora. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, honestly, it could be their, uh, their way of just putting the price so close together that when they phase out the non-interactive ones, people are like, eh, it was only five bucks, so yeah. it's not mm -hmm. a big deal. Exactly. As opposed to having that big yeah. price gap and then dropping it. And realistically, to add that little scanner piece in the front, it's it costs them pennies. Yeah, so of course, mm -hmm. there's 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 no major production you know changes for them. Yeah, and then you've got that one for every visit you come to after that. So it might be massively busy, and you might not get into the interactive spots. But then you come back at a different time. Oh, it's quiet. Let's jump in. Mm -hmm. and do them at that point. Because I must admit, mm -hmm. it's something I want to do. But it's always that thing we've talked about it before where. Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade are always that busy that there's lines and you're going to see it before you actually get to do it so it kind of, it doesn't defeat the object but it's not quite as exciting as it when you've watched half mm -hmm. a dozen people in front of you do the spell and then you're doing it yourself. Yeah, it's more of a chore. Yeah. yeah, we are fast getting to the point though where we're not tied to holidays. No. So. No. Uh, yeah. Haven't you a reopening, Chris? We talked before we started recording. You are heading up there next weekend, I do believe. Sapphire. Yeah, I said Aventura, didn't I? Oh, well. Look, you did? It's a hotel. I mean, if you want me open. to go there as well, I can do that too. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> All right. Look, I got it wrong. No, I'm, I'm glad they're <laughs> opening now. Yeah. Because, you know, Bar 17 is also a great spot. Yeah. I mean, from what I can see, Nicole, you've probably got a better at boots on the ground view of this because you go far more than we do. Um, everything seems to be back to normal from what I can gather capacities back to full capacity all the rides are open like Seth said all single rider lines are open it seems like all the dividers have gone 
Yes. Um, characters are pretty much back. Everything's getting seated every row now. The shows seem to be there. Yep. Um, from your experience going, does it feel normal? Like normal as in pre-COVID? Uh, honestly, yeah. So once they uh, they changed the mask mandate for indoors, um, and I, I do have both vaccinations. So in the Florida heat, I definitely did uh, take advantage of that. And I'll say if if safety is a concern for you, um, it it is pretty normal. It feels pretty much back to what it was before, even like the hand sanitizer stations before the rides. You don't really have that. If you want it, you have to take it into your own hands, um, which with me, you know, I am I am vaccinated. So I guess maybe that's that comfort. But if I wasn't, I, I don't know exactly how it would feel. But yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty, there's a few um, a couple of things that it really doesn't even stick out anymore because it's not those big plexiglass barriers. Yeah. Um, you know, you're not wearing the mask where it's 95 degrees and then you got an extra 10 degrees on your face. So, yeah, it's it's pretty much back to normal. Chris, how are you and Alexa feeling about going up there next weekend with everything being normal then? Because I know like Alexa's anxiety about COVID and stuff was pretty high when it first started. How's she feeling? Yeah, she's feeling a lot better. I mean, we're both, you know, feeling better about it because we, you know, have both been vaccinated a while ago. That's in our system. You know, we waited the whole time period that's needed. And being here in South Florida, things have kind of gone the same direction as they have in Orlando, probably even quicker than some of the parks there, um, depending, you know, where you're going. Um, so we've gotten more custom and 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 yeah, fine with kind of going around doing that. I mean, we'll still have our mask with us, uh, with us if we feel like mm -hmm. putting it on inside, we will. But we don't have that severe anxiety that, like, comes along with how it was before, especially because I've been seeing, you know, we keep an eye on the numbers and all that stuff. And it's, you know, has a trajectory path going down further and further. So it's it's nice to see that. And so it doesn't make us, you know, as nervous or anything like that going up there. I know we've still got like over a year before we're going, but if we, if our October trip was still going ahead, Tracy, how would you feel? If we're all vaccinated. I'm talking about you, not me, all of I'll us. I'll be vaccinated, fully vaccinated by then. No, so I'm actually, talking about if our October trip this year hadn't have been. I'm answering. Right, okay. I'll be fully, fully vaccinated by then. So I would feel a lot better than I did before. Mm. Um, Still not too happy about being a long flight. Mm. Mm -hmm. We've got a while yet. I wouldn't worry about it. I know, but <laughs> what I'm saying is because <laughs> because not everybody's vaccinated, it isn't it isn't going to stop you getting it. It's just going to lessen the yeah, you know. And with me, every time I fly, I get a chest infection. So that is that's at the forefront of my mind. Is I well, don't want to get a chest infection that could potentially be COVID as well. You mean like anyway. Like you wore, you wore a mask the last twice anyway. I know yeah. you got a chest infection last time, but we're going to blame a certain little small blonde child yes, that's upstairs in the bedroom at the moment. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was entirely her she fault, She tried I to believe, kill me. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird because like we're not... I mean, how do you feel, Lee? Um, I'm all right. Like my anxiety levels have been pretty low right from the start because I've the one, even during lockdown, I was the one going out. I was comfortable so Tracy was like anxious as hell going out so I was the one doing the supermarket runs and the stuff like that so and then obviously I've been going to work since June last year so mm -hmm. me being away from it hasn't really been mm -hmm. as much as it has for Tracy she's stayed away from it not having to go to work and stuff like that whereas I've been thrust into it so it's my life didn't change that much because of it so it hasn't it's not like I've had to step away for it for six months and then come back to it. I've kind of been in it all the time anyway, so I'll be fine. I mean, it looks... It, 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 watching vlogs and seeing photos of the parks, it looks rammed, like mm. ridiculously yeah. busy. Yeah, that wouldn't that wouldn't make me comfortable at the but moment. But then that's, I don't know whether that's this like normal for this time of year because I wouldn't come over in June or July anyway. No. Um, it's pretty bad normally during right. the summertime. Okay. Like, yeah, well, it's the beginning of a uh, summer break too, so everybody is just flying into the parks. Mm, I think yeah. the ones that weren't able to get to, you know, get into it, they're like, "All right, it's time." Yeah. And you're probably going to find the, that happens as well once the mm -hmm. borders open and people from over here can start flying again. You'll get that mass influx of of Brits who are desperate to get back over, mm -hmm. or the giant Brazilian tour groups. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, 
No, but I mean, I'm, I'm like Nicole had mentioned earlier, like not having to wear your mask outside. I cannot wait to go back over there yeah. and do that mm. just because for us, I mean, the heat is bad down here. Obviously, mm-hmm. Nicole, you know that. Yeah. And trying to breathe in a mask with that on. I mean, we literally, you know, had a lot of troubles where I we had to just kind of stop. Yeah. And it has nothing yeah. to do with, oh, you know, I'm not getting enough oxygen. No, it's hot. Like, yeah. my no, body, your sweat is sweating. Yeah. Like. <laughs> yeah. My mask is wet. So I'm yeah, like waterboarding good. myself throughout, walking, you know, throughout the park. So we're really, really looking forward to that. Okay. And, you know, I'm also even more excited now that you said it, it kind of just feels like, normal mm-hmm. yeah um mm-hmm. with with characters and all that stuff because like as we've been doing things throughout this entire you know time the more things we keep on doing that just feels normal it just feels better you know living again um mm-hmm. but uh it'll be interesting when they start opening up ports and and people flying in from out of town definitely and out of the country right mm-hmm. not just yeah. out of town uh, just because you know we'll see we'll see how things are going back then I, I just i don't want any new deltas or any new other variants that like aren't mm-hmm. effective against the you know the vaccine because then i'll be like i don't know how i feel now yes yeah. go home everyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool right there's a bit there i want to talk about but it's lin- later on so i'll save it for later on when we actually get into it but right is now it horror nights related it is horror nights related okay, i don't so really want to talk I, I about, about it too much something, but go ahead We'll, we'll, we'll keep it for later, Chris. Okay, okay. I need time to build up okay. to Horror Nights because I'm very sad. Um, but something I am excited about for when it opens, and that is Ben the Bow. So, Nicole, can you tell us more about this new restaurant? Yes, yes, because we do love food, too. We love our HHN, mm, but we yes. love food. Yeah, so um, as Seth had told us, uh, Universal Orlando Resort has opened an all-new quick-service food venue called Ben the Bow at Universal City Walk. Featuring a variety of delicious items that fuse popular Asian cuisine with diverse ingredients. Ben the Bao is the latest original concept uh, dining experience created exclusively by Universal Orlando, combining unique theming with an extraordinary twist on the traditional quick service restaurant. Incredibly colorful pop art representing the creatures of the Chinese zodiac will welcome guests to the venue. And there's a lot of really delicious stuff. And the first item on the menu is actually the kimchi FC. And it's kimchi fried chicken, kimchi butter, gochujang, scallion, cucumber, and sriracha <laughs> aioli. Tracy? Oh. Um, mm, I mean, yes. this is just in Tracy's wheelhouse. Oh, just my God. Was, like, the, the, this menu's going to kill Tracy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my gosh. Just, just, it, I, the yeah. first thing I thought of was Tracy <laughs> is going to die over this. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, everything I love. Korean, mm-hmm. Asian, and... Oh, that wow. does sound good. Oh. Like, mm-hmm. I know what Korean fried chicken's like for having you well, done it. it. Yeah, it's amazing. You know a good just, chance, yeah. like, because I cook oh. with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one's actually is... one of my favorites. Oof. Yes. Yeah. And I'm surprised, to be honest, that that sushi place has been open as long as it has after Cowfish opened. Mm-hmm. It's a weird... You know, that place was just a weird spot to have there. Like, I don't eat sushi. I've gone there before. Yeah. Like, when somebody else wanted sushi, it was all right. It wasn't anything out of this world. It wasn't and accessible. you're right. It's, it's, it's odd that it was there so long. Yeah, it mm. was just like, because you think you look like Moore's and um, whatever's over that other side. Uh, Burger King. And Pandora. thingy Pandora. Pandora Express. Yeah, it's all over the mm. other side. And then that was kind of on its own there. It's it was kind of weird. got a balcony. And I actually think a lot of people <laughs> don't mm-hmm. even know that that ups upstairs no. section yeah you're going there. out of your way pretty much mm-hmm. to get yeah. up there like why would you you're never going to accidentally oh. find yourself up there yes i I'm, know you're panda express i'm going to be torn i'm going to have both yeah <laughs> <laughs> just loves, I, I must admit i have a bit yeah. of a convert for that orange chicken isn't yeah <laughs> panda express is fire i don't know what you're talking <laughs> yeah. about i love panda express it is good. it's like really guilty bad guilt yeah it's exactly what it is <laughs> yeah. it's guilty food yeah it is good good job we don't have it over here <laughs> <sighs> yeah ah. all right uh pork belly also, my pet name that Alexa calls me. <laughs> uh, so this is pork belly, scallions, cucumber, honey roasted peanuts, and cilantro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go for that. I'm not hearing anything I wouldn't try yet. No. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, no peanuts, but okay. Yeah. Really? I love I, I not love a peanuts. peanut guy. Oh. Mm. Um, I'm not a cilantro guy. Um, <laughs> not have... a guy for a start either, but okay. <laughs> we also have duck, which is braised duck, kimchi slaw, exo sauce, which I... Don't know what that is. I'm gonna Google it. Um, cilantro and five spice aioli. You don't like five spice, do you? No. 
or cilantro. I don't know what five spice is. What is that? It's the stuff they put in all the curries over either. You complain, isn't it? Oh, well, thank you, Tracy. (laughs) Yeah, I can't even English. Is it like a seafood type spice? Because when I tried it, I was like, this tastes fishy to me. And I'm like, it's duck, which is gamey, but. Yeah, no, it's five spice, I think, is ginger. Uh, what's the one I don't like? Um, <laughs> Most of um, them. <laughs> st- star anise. What? It's, uh, it's got, I oh, like that. Anything that's star anise friendly or anything like that, I can't stand it. So but that's mm. where it's got in it. But it's in a lot of, of Asian cuisine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I see fennel. Yeah. No, no just fennel. hates fennel. Can't stand it. Uh, so exo, I've tried. exo yeah. sauce is... Um, it's it's a fish, a seafood based sauce. Oh, its main ingredients are dried scallop, chili peppers, ginhua ham, dried shrimp, <laughs> garlic, and canola oil. There you go then. Oh. Say there's that your, three times fast. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't. Um, yeah, I I think that's what it was because yeah. we were tasting it, and maybe if I knew what that was before going in and tasting it, it would have maybe sat differently with me. But I'm yeah. like, something's weird. I'm like, I think yeah. it's too close to the crab cake. Okay. Yeah. It's a little weird. Well, next up, Universal Signature that they seem to be doing in everything at the moment, and as long as, uh, as well as green eggs and ham, and over at uh, Central Park Crepes is the beef brisket, mm-hmm. which is uh, obviously got beef brisket, fried, fried jalapeno, uh, of jalap- jalapeno, depending on where you're from, pickled red onion, <laughs> cilantro, and avocado lime crema, whatever the hell that is. I will take a thousand of those. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. There's nothing in there that makes me go, no, I wouldn't try that. Apart, Trish doesn't like avocado. Or cilantro, so them together. <laughs> it's guacamole you're putting in there. Vile. I like guacamole. Yeah, but that, that yeah. brisket that's actually on this is, it's smoky, and it's Ooh. not the same consistency as the green eggs and ham brisket, where it's that okay. um, thin kind of flat where it almost dries out. This is, it's it's juicy. It's very succulent brisket. Okay. Really, really tasty. <sighs> Chris is I'm, like, dry, the, yeah. uh, I'm literally like, I'm watering right now in my mouth. It's fried jalapenos, brisket, oh, especially yeah. like, oof. Mm-hmm. yeah. Living in the South, that's what we're built for. It, it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to go up there and get a few of these. All of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Just get I, just, I meant just a few of the brisket. Oh, right. And the rest. <laughs> and then one of everything else. Yeah. And we have a veggie section one. Just one. I love how there's only one <laughs> veggie option. Uh, which is roasted oyster mushrooms. So that's a veggie in our house, not eating them. That's pretty much. Uh, spinach, sweet potato, caramelized onions, smoked ricotta cheese, and tomatillo salsa. Which sounds good. It does sound mm. good. Mm. Yes. I would um, try that one. I'm gonna, M- Nicole, did you say you'd been here? Yeah, we uh, we went just fat times and went and got every single one to try them all. All of them, and, Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's I. I have that new uh, discount on me, so I was like, yeah, oh, why yes, not? yeah. Well, she got the team member, the thirty-five <laughs> percent team member discount. I know that one. Yeah, it makes me feel really <laughs> big. So I'm like, it's fine. We'll take them all. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, we we actually did try this, and um, Jeff and I both were were not veggie people. That really isn't something that calls our name. And man, we tried this. This is actually on my list of would get again. Okay. So the quick yeah, question I was actually going to ask you, are they made to order? If there was something in a specific one that you didn't like, could you ask them to not put it in? You know what? Um, we So Jeff kind of takes the approach of you order it as is because they made it like that for a reason. Yeah. Um, I'm not necessarily that person, but he kind of said, you know, at least while we try them for the first time, let's do it. So I'm not exactly sure. What I can say, though, was they are open face because it is just a steam bow bun. Um, so because they are open face, it, it was very easy. Like he will not touch avocado with a 10 foot pole. OK. And very um, wise. he was able to easily kind of it. Nothing besides the sauces, nothing really, um, you know, took over too much. So you're okay. able to kind of make it as is if you really didn't like something. Right. Um, whether or not they'll customize it, I'm not sure. They were so busy that I don't know that I would have, but of I'm course. also in food service. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. But they might. They might. Okay. Something to find out in the future. I want to know which one your favorite is after we're done reading these. Okay. <laughs> I am interested. Yes. Oh, I'm next. Here we go. Shrimp. <laughs> you think you've been doing this for Look a while? That. Gave me seafood, and I hate seafood. Fried shrimp, <laughs> shredded cabbage, avocado. 
Pico de Gallo and Chipotle Crema. I mean, yes. I love Chipotle. Mm-hmm. I love Chipotle. Mm-hmm. So, yes, all of that. Same. Same. Uh, you don't like shrimp, do you? No, yes, no, yes, <laughs> yes. So I'll have, I'll have cabbage with pico de gallo and chipotle crema. She'll take half. Yeah, and I'll eat the bits out of it and put it in another one. <laughs> no, I don't like it. I keep uh, trying it, but I don't neat. like it. Oh, I do. All right, so our last one is going to be the crab cake, which is a Maryland-style crab cake, shredded lettuce, diced tomato, and mustard aioli. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. There isn't a single one on there that I've gone, no, I wouldn't try that. Don't eat crab. Uh, I sound so fussy today. Wow. They all sound really good. And the pictures yeah, they that they posted good. on their social media, they look mm. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I personally, just as somebody who went and tried them all um, back to back to back, we did have to kind of find a table. So they weren't super fresh. Um, but they, they were all really good. Like I would eat all of them again. If I were ordering, there's probably two that I'm like, eh, yeah, I could take them or leave them. But, um, the other five were pretty solid. Um, and I know Chris, you were asking what, what my favorites were. Um, I, am a sucker for spice. So that kimchi FC, the, the fried chicken, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. kimchi one, which kimchi to me, isn't something that really calls my name, but put the spice and that sriracha aioli in there. Um, I think I, I haven't decided my top three, but the kimchi FC, um, the pork belly, which I know you guys said, eh, not a fan of peanuts, but the crunch against no, the no, texture peanuts. of the babon. Yeah, it, w- it was great. It was um, really fresh because like, you taste the scallions, the cucumber, um, but they're, the honey roasted peanuts. I don't know if maybe that would break anybody, but um, yeah, that one's really good. And then actually the shrimp was the was the third one that. I really, really liked, um, and it was crunchy versus like the smooth bao bun, which maybe I'm just a texture person, but um, mm. yeah, yeah, no, th- those are my top top three, like probably my go to for for ordering with uh, beef brisket and the close fourth. Okay, so let me just give you all seven. Interesting. Right? <laughs> Lee, do you smell that? What smells that? like well, our we... next competition. Oh, Tracy, yes, Tracy and I have already discussed it, actually, I've but just, it is a perfect I've just, one. I've literally just messaged mm-hmm. and yes. come up with the which, name. Yeah, <laughs> Tracy's already which, got a name which, for it. Which bow do you chow? Oh, no, no oh, it's close. Close. very close to what Tracy's just come up with, so you're on the right I'm line. I'm very curious. How yes. now bow chow? <laughs> How now bow chow? <laughs> <laughs> just to hear everybody say that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> say that with your mouth full of bow. <laughs> Yeah. It's interesting one that they've done one with peanuts, haven't they? Considering like how many people have mm. peanut allergies and stuff, and it's like mm-hmm. such a dodgy thing to put in food. But I, like, I love peanuts, so I, like I say, I know you said Nicole that it's like there's a you tried them all, and there was a few that, like oh, I wouldn't be bothered about that again. But coming at it from a point of view where everything on the menu is something I would want to try is is a mm-hmm. big deal. It's a yeah. big mm-hmm. deal to find a, a quick service place that has however many there is, eight or nine items, and not one of them that you look at and go, oh, I wouldn't be bothered about trying that. I would try them all. Yeah. Well, and, and that being said, too, Jeff was actually, when he we kind of did our top three back-to-back, when he was giving me his, it was my bottom ones. So it's, it's that thing just like, say, for Horror Nights. Everybody's favorite house is going to be different just yeah. depending on mm-hmm. the person. Of course. So there was nothing that was, um, you know, that was gross or we would never eat again. It was just... There's something for everybody. Um, but they did those some things very well where I would still eat all of them again. Maybe I wouldn't order them, but if somebody's like, hey, here's the, you know, crab cake or whatever, I'd gladly eat it. So yeah, no, they they knocked it out. I just love that it's another restaurant that is an original concept, right? Yes. There's nothing mm-hmm. like this. Same. Yeah, it's that's awesome. I mean, keep it up. I'd rather have that than another chain. Mm-hmm. And if we know Universal, we're probably going to see some themed items when different times of the year oh, come around. That, that so. would be amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like mean, I, Thanksgiving bow bun. Oh, my goodness. Yes. yes. You look at what City War was in 2013 and compare it to now. It is night and day and it is so mm-hmm. much better that you look that everything they've brought in is either a, a universal concept. So Vivo, Antihitos, uh, Toothsome, Big Fire. And then the ones that they've brought in are those kind of, I'm going to use the term one of a kind, but not necessarily because there are others, but those tiny little 
one or two other kind places like Cowfish or Voodoo Donut, you know, these really mm-hmm. off the mm-hmm. off the wall places the that, you, places. that you're not going mm-hmm. to find anywhere mm-hmm. else. And it's I just um I I love City Walk now. It's funny when we started this podcast, I always remember talking about City Walk and it was it was something that it was a it was a a bypass for us. Mm-hmm. It was it was the way to the parks and that was it. And now we spend a ton of time in City Walk mm-hmm. because there is a reason to stay there. It's not just chain restaurants, which is pretty much what it no. was. Now it isn't. They've, they've really... They've made it of, hard to decide where to eat. Uh, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. And for such a small... Yeah. Like you go to Disney Springs and there's a million places to eat. And it, and then you look at City Walk, which is a tiny place, yet it's still difficult to know where you want to go because mm-hmm. there's so many good choices. It's awesome. Agreed. Agreed. Mm. All right. So um, wrapping up the bows, as for pricing goes, you can purchase two bows for eleven ninety nine, or add a third for an extra four forty nine. That's not or bad. Or if you're like us, just buy them all. Yeah. Um, How does that work <laughs> price wise then? Did they charge you? That's, that's interesting. Did they charge you eleven ninety nine, yeah, so and then four forty nine for the third one, and then the same yep, for the next five. drink? You got it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So they're just four forty nine, four forty nine. Until you, until you get to the end. Oh, so hang on. So they charge you eleven ninety nine for two, and then four forty nine for every extra one after. Yep. Exactly. Awesome. Oh, okay. oh, that is yep. awesome. So it's it's there's no limit after. So if you do want to buy the whole menu, um, yeah, they'll just tack that on as just kind of like a like an extra charge. That's actually not nice. bad. No. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, you know I know a lot of us are are pass holders or have buddies that are pass holders. Just scan that. You'll get your you know your discount and it really i mean it really isn't too bad compared to um you know other local places that sell you know sell bows it's maybe mm. maybe a dollar more a bow um so yeah not not too terrible oh, i want to see for them a theme park as well that's i want to yeah. see them do a breakfast bow oh. we've complained about oh chris is that right in your wheelhouse a breakfast bow sandwich oh Oh yeah, <laughs> throw some eggs in there. That'd be awesome. A little bit of a little bit of bacon, a little bit of pork, something yeah. in there. Awesome. Oh. Mm-hmm. What's interesting though is I'm planning on making bow from scratch soon. So okay, I love them. Challenge accepted. I do like them. They're weird. It's like a weird texture. Oh, I can just understand so light if people have never had them before. It is a weird texture, but they are. They are. They just. I, I assume I do these like are the them. ones that are more like a, a like a, a taco type yeah, thing. Yeah, because I like. Yes. I like the stuffed dumpling style ones. Yeah, as well. I like them as well. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's we actually started doing those with a little steamer mm-hmm. steamer basket, and yep. I'll tell you, it tastes it tastes very similar to the ones we made at home. Awesome. Yeah, it just yeah. So, yeah. It, it again moving on to the next thing. It's interesting, obviously, doing this podcast and seeing that even during the times we've had in the last eighteen months, Universal continue to open new things, and it might not be major things, but they're still. There's every every two weeks we do this show, and there's always something news wise to talk about. Something open, something changing, something new, and that hasn't changed. Mm-hmm. It's bizarre, and obviously the latest opening we had, Chris, which you are going to be checking out next weekend, is the Velocicoaster. Yes. So the Jurassic World Velocicoaster has opened at Islands of Adventure theme park, unleashing Florida's fastest, tallest, and most intense launch coaster ever created. Catapulting, catapulting or pulting <laughs> riders 155 feet into the air at extreme speeds up to 70 miles per hour while racing alongside a ferocious velociraptor pack inspired by the blockbuster Jurassic World films. Now, as we have told you a million times, the ride features an original story starring the velociraptor pack Blue, Charlie, Delta, and Echo. Uh, Velocicoaster will immerse guests within a genuine uh, Jurassic World environment surrounded by 36,000 square feet of elaborate rock work, a giant waterfall and lush jungle vegetation, and catapulting them along 4,700 feet of pulse-pounding track, 155 feet in the air at 70 miles per hour. Now, the coaster dashes through the raptor paddock and hurls at breakneck speeds. Now, there is no turning back as guests are swept along a series of extreme maneuvers and high-speed launches, that culminates in a spiraling 360 degree inversion. That's a bit I'm looking Uh, forward to. Yeah. Uh, Inches above the lagoon. Uh, Securely strapped into revolutionary design ride vehicles, uh, the Vasa Coaster's intensity will amplify a sense of weightlessness from start to finish. Now, Nicole, 
as the only person on this podcast at the moment to have ridden this, and I don't want you to go into too much detail because we will be doing that in a couple of weeks, as you know. Give us a brief review. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah, it's just like sigh. Um, Yeah, just brief overview, no spoilers. Um, You know, we kind of had that discussion of what what is the word that really um, describes the Velocicoast to you? intense intensity so much fun um just knocks it out of the ballpark i'm somebody who is just a coaster freak i i was born and raised in michigan and i live very close to cedar point right so yeah (laughs) millennium force and magnum and all all those really yeah um really crazy rides you know i i grew up with that so um coming coming down to orlando when i you know when i finally moved over here um, you know, you, you ride Hagrid's and this and that, and the theming is amazing. And, um, you know, it makes you feel all these things and the Hulk is super intense. Rip ride rocket. Feel like you might fling out of it. Not really sure. <laughs> no. Um, but, but then you, you go on Velocicoaster and it's just like, I mean, as, as universal says, it makes you, whoa, um, <laughs> that is, that's just the best nerdiest way to describe mm-hmm. it is you just you get that feeling and you get butterflies it's like um it's like getting off like you just had a successful first date oh. like you're just like, wow. <laughs> yeah yeah it's, i know it sounds so stupid but when you ride it you'll be like i get that <laughs> yeah so um yeah really really intense amazing the theming really is m- more um heavily laid out in in the queue um which is kind of awesome because that's where you can take your your camera and you yes. know videotape and you get all the way through pretty much until the there's one little segment that I think I wish for most people that they would be able to take their cameras in but it's it's not a big deal the big stuff you're able to still record and experience um so yeah I I I mean they just they do a great job kind of laying it on heavy there and you're going so fast anyways that the the theming that maybe isn't as heavy as Hagrid's um is is still there, but at the very end, you're just spending it looking at the the scape of of the land, and yeah. you're just like, "Whoa, this is this is nuts." So yeah, no, it's it's awesome. It's I, awesome. I love how coasters have gone from just a steel structure to something as well themed as this. And you know, Universal have done, mm-hmm. you know, you had Dueling Dragons, which to be fair, the ride itself was themed, but nothing else. And then you moved into mm-hmm. Hagrid's was like that next step, but it's not a particularly intense coaster. Now you've got a world-class, <sighs> intense, yeah. proper mm-hmm. thrill junkies coaster yeah. with the theming of something like Hagrid's. Yep. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you, you start, you start with that theming tonight. and you end with it. Chris, yeah, I'm it's... not being funny, but you're going next weekend. We're not going to get to ride it for like another 13 months and it's killing me. I'll ride it twice just for you. Oh. <laughs> just because he asked nicely. <laughs> but it does, like, the, the, and the theming isn't just, like, obviously, Nicole said you're going that fast. You don't really see it that much on the ride itself. But from the outside point of view, from people walking through the land, from viewing it from around Islands of Adventure, it just adds so much to Islands that it's desperately mm-hmm. needed in that area for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. It, it pumps that heartbeat. Um, well, and the, the thing that I can tell, like first time riders, keep your ears turned all the way on. Um, beginning of the ride, end of the ride, even in the middle, um, you know, listen for the the raptors and just just keep your ears open because that's, kind of kind of a lot of it and that feel and you're just like you you get that storyline um definitely more through through sound versus um you know you're going so fast the sight isn't is as important but just the sound you're like oh wow okay like you're right there with chris pratt just running with raptors so it's like um the water ride uh the log the what log flume the water slider aquatic i didn't know where they made a big deal you fly through commerson's dolphins and you're like yeah. where were they again <laughs> <laughs> um did anybody see the news article that came out about uh, two weeks ago of some knobhead throwing ice at the people going oh, over the, yes. uh, the why 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 mm-hmm. people are tools i just don't get it, was it. A I, yes, I think so. Because apparently it hit a rider and bounced back 
that they threw it that hard that it hit yeah. someone on the ride and then bounced back and hit somebody on the side as well. People like that shouldn't be allowed back it's into public ridiculous. spaces and at all like that. You look just, up, wasn't it like a group of like younger kids? I think so, yeah, like middle schoolers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, it's just ridiculous okay. though. And you look Ban up what, all. Um, yeah. uh, what happened on Dragon Challenge that Universal... Um, well, before that, you'd be you'd, you'd express surprise that there wasn't any... Well, yeah, it was so close with no barrier or anything. Because you guys have been there, you've seen that that bit is literally in fr- it, it, from mm-hmm. from videos and and photos we've seen. It looks like you could reach out and touch the people on it. It's that close, and I'm surprised that they didn't. Just because, not because they didn't want to, not because they're not wanting to make guests safe, but just because of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so eloquent. Yeah. Well, there there is one area that has kind of like a steel wall. And I wasn't sure if it was blocking people throwing stuff at the people because people are idiots or if it was maybe, um, you know, rogue sunglass or something like that. Or even I've seen masks, shoes, um, jewelry items just hanging on. There's like (laughs) a grate over one part of the outside queue. Um, where you can kind of see the graveyard of things lost. Um, so I wasn't I wasn't sure really if that's what it was, but um, yeah, just the last time I went, it looked like they tried to keep us from that outside part right. where you do that um, the 360 spiral where you're pretty much touching the lagoon. Mm. Um, yeah, they they completely just try to keep you from there. But mm, I mean, yeah. w- once it gets past 45 minutes, there's there's no way around it. So there's a poor team member that has to sit there and watch those idiots, Ugh. you know. Yeah, it's sad that you have to do it. Is that yeah. how the restock in the tribute store? Quite possibly. <laughs> <you know. laughs> it's more authentic that way. I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Right, moving on. Tracy, we are getting mm-hmm. on to our ad break. And before the ad break, as we always do, it's time to announce some Producers Club birthdays. Yay, kick time. I see a big one in here, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't um, see anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we only have four this time. Um, quite a short list. So we will begin with the 25th of June, and that is the lovely Leslie Kish's birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Oh, in total sync. Way. <laughs> Take the practice. <laughs> <laughs> and then two days later, the 27th, it's the lovely Brian Jennings' birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> The only one of the, I was going to say the only one of these people we've met, but there is one on the end that we've mm-hmm. met. Yes. <laughs> and following oh that, it is Adam Pagan's birthday on the 28th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then finally, it is our very own. I mean, you might know this one, Chris. It is Alexa Maybe. Marrero's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday, That's Alexa. on the 30th. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Alexa. Feliz cumpleaños. Ooh. There you oh, go. Chris didn't do there it. So you I go. Had to. <laughs> Gotta make it special for this one. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday, guys. Yeah. I hope you all have a great birthday. Get lots of cake. And I will be having some cake on this one, actually. Yes. Good. <laughs> Save some. And, and Chris knows what it is now, so. Yeah. All is good. So no excuses for birthday presents. <laughs> of course, if you want your birthday read out on the show, like these lovely people and many others this year, and I haven't forgotten any so far this year, I'm doing well. <gasps> he shot himself. You can the join foot. the producers club. Um, <laughs> this, we're, we're doing renewals at the moment, so there's a lot of new members in, a lot of people coming back in, and the group on Facebook is awesome. But mm-hmm. as we've mentioned on the show before, we you get. Um, we do giveaways we do exclusive podcasts we do unedited podcasts they're always fun um, especially when you're talking about Barney uh, birthday read out <laughs> on the show we have producers club merch there's a lot of stuff going on if you are interested in joining the cult then just email us at UUOP producers that is a double P in the middle there because apparently someone been trying to email us for months and realised they left out a P but did get in touch in the end. So it's producers at gmail.com and come and join the fun. And moving on then, she's not here. So I'm going to pass you over to hear from our lovely sponsors, Mouse and Muggle. Have you taken a stroll down Diagon Alley and visited Gringotts Bank? Taken a ride through New York with Jimmy Fallon? Visited the Truffler Trees and Zeus Landing or hung out with a real-life Transformer? No? Then what are you waiting for? At Universal Orlando Resort, there truly is an option for everyone. Or if you're leaning a little more towards pixie dust rather than wands and potions, Disney destinations around the globe await your arrival. No matter the adventure, our sponsors have you covered. 
Be sure to let the experts at Mouse and Muggle Travel Company take care of all your travel needs. Earning the distinction of being an earmarked agency, specializing in Disney destinations, as well as becoming one of the first to be named a You Preferred Agency with Universal Parks and Resorts Vacations. Mouse and Muggle Travel Company will ensure you receive top rate customized service. Just visit mouseandmuggle.com to fill out a non obligation court request or send your request to info at mouseandmuggle.com. Their team can take care of you no matter where in the world you go. With a flick of their wand and a little bit of pixie dust, the process will be so seamless. Some might even say it's simply magical. Welcome back, everyone. We are here talking about Universal Orlando. It's Tracy, Chris and Nicole. I keep wanting to call you Michelle because I'm so used to Michelle being here and she's not. <laughs> That's a compliment. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, and it's time to hear another clip because we have a rate my creep from Courtney <laughs> and Dustin. <laughs> Hi, you UOP. This is Courtney. And Dustin. And we're here to rate, rate my, my crepe. <laughs> we tried the vegan sausage crepe. And Dustin, what do you think about it? I loved it. I think, um, you know, on our trip, we went to Disney and Universal. And honestly, it was one of the best things I had out of the entire trip. Uh, five out of five would eat again any day of the week. I'm going to give it a four out of five only because there were a lot of tomatoes in it. And I'm not a fan of tomatoes. We were sharing so we could try more things around the park. And next time we'll definitely get our own and I will be no tomatoes. Yeah, because I, uh, after we ate it, I was like, I think we probably should have each gotten one because it was that good. It was so good. Yeah. So I just want to say happy 10th anniversary to you guys, to your podcast. Thank you. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Bye. <sighs> All these new food places opening that have that since the last time we were there is killing me. Mm-hmm. I cannot. Yeah, a whole new park for you guys. Oh, it's going to feel I weird. Know. It's funny we were talking about it last night. Obviously, before we come over, we'll probably do an episode of everything that's new since the last time we were over, and it'll only been about two and a half years, and yet there's a ton of stuff new since the last time we came. It's just crazy. It goes back to what I said at the beginning of the show that Universal just keep cranking out new stuff, and it's. It's phenomenal, even like during the times that we've got going. And then obviously you've got Epic Universe down the road, which apparently um, in some earnings call the other day, some guy said it's going to be in a couple of years. I don't see it being a couple of years, but okay. Hey, we'll take well, it. Yeah. That would be awesome. Um, Chris, how can people send theirs in? Well, if you'd like to be part of Rate, my crepe, <laughs> or creepy, wherever you're from. Uh, record us a message rating any and all of the crepes you have tried from Central Park Crepes out of five. Now, got to remember this. This is key. Jillian. <laughs> One being <laughs> and five being hell yeah. And send them to us at podcast at uuopodcast.com. And we'll play them out for you. We've had a few in and I think people are finally starting to grasp it. As I say, I blame Jillian because she was the one that set the precedent of not actually rating them, of just doing it the way we've done everything else. Mm -hmm. but I think people are finally coming around to it now. Gillian is a loose cannon. She always has been. Oh. She always will be. That's why we love her. Tell me about it. We had a back and forth yesterday, her and I, over the Velocicoaster um, round table that we are doing. She got a flea in her ear. Let's just oh. leave it at that. Oh. <laughs> For being facetious. Anyway, Tracy. There's a reason why I love Gillian. We're not going to get there, but... We need to talk about it because there has been some announcements. If we must. Yeah. So, yep, the September moves ever closer without us. Uh, more details of this year's Halloween Horror Nights 30 are being revealed. And the latest news is Seth mentioned in Little Things and as Maddie and Kenneth discussed on the latest episode of our sister podcast, Rush of Fear, is that Jack the Clown will return as an invented face. Woo! <laughs> Sorry. Now, View Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights as the world's premier Halloween event commemorates its 30th year again. And select tickets and vacation <laughs> packages are now on sale. It is weird that all that 30th merch was there last year and then it's not actually until this year. I know. And we're not actually there. Oh, I don't. It's killing me. Jack the Clown, though. I know. Oh, my God. I love Jack. Oh, yeah. So... Yes, the most notorious icon in event history, Jack's return to Halloween Horror Nights 2021 will be fraught with terror and fear as the grisly circus clown invades every corner, every corner of this year's event with unsuspecting Jack attacks that will t that will send guests running for their lives. Or it sounds very interesting to be there to just watch. 
Uh, his ominous and unrelenting presence will infiltrate every aspect of the event, from the streets to the haunted houses to the places guests would least expect. Well, that's a bathroom, then. Um, they would leave nowhere to turn and nowhere to hide. That's really interesting. Mm-hmm. That's good, though, because it sounds like it's going to have a cohesive storyline throughout yeah. the entire year, which is making me even more sad. Yes. I want him in the bathroom. I want nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, surprise, Jack's back. <laughs> Under the, well, he'll be able to see you through the massive gap in the toilet door. That's true. <laughs> Oh, no. Can you imagine walking in and looking through the gap to see if it was empty oh. and Jack just stood there peering oh, no, that back would out be at you? Funny. That would be hilarious. That would be funny. <laughs> what they need to do is little cutouts on the backs of the doors. Just Put them in the toilet, out. too. Yeah, yeah that's, that would be hilarious. <laughs> um, as of now, guests can only purchase single night event tickets, RIP tours, and behind the screams unmasking the horror tours. Which, yes, I would do them all. We have done them all. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Universal Orlando Hotel guests also receive exclusive benefits, including access to a dedicated entry gate for the event with valid event admission, uh, complimentary transportation to Universal's theme parks and Universal City Walk, and access to an all-new limited-time jacked-up experience at Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort, where guests get a closer look into the chaotic world of Jack and some of the sinister environment inspired by his past invasions of Halloween Horror Nights. That sounds really cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, plus, the hotel's Swizzle Lounge lobby bar will transform into the Horror Icons bar. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Um, featuring specialty beverages and snacks inspired by the event's most famous and uh, most infamous icon, icons. That's even more famous than famous. Uh, and props <laughs> and costumes that pay an eerie homage to Halloween Horror Nights past. Obviously, they've done that over there because now with the, the event being normal they did the skeleton bar over at Cafe mm. La Bamba last year and obviously with R.I.P. Yeah. to us being back on Cafe La Bamba will revert back to being the VIP yeah. lounge so they had to do this somewhere which it did look pretty cool last year to be fair this is a great idea mm-hmm. yeah um, and if you want to, to hear more discussion on this check out episode 6 of Rush of Fear which came out on yesterday yesterday Sunday. on Sunday. Sunday yes so go and listen I know. I have never been so devastated to not be going to Halloween Horror Nights more than I am this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this guts me. As somebody who I've actually only met Chance before, face to face, so to to start seeing all these icons and my chance to get that, it's is gutting to know that you guys. I know we've kind of talked a little bit about it, just like. Oh, we need to just come up with like teleportation device or something. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's something. just like, I know how having only ever been once before 25, 25 was the perfect event to have been like our next step into Halloween Horror Nights because it kind of lent it, it lent on its history. So there was actually stuff at 25 from the year we went and it was great to see mm-hmm. that. Um, like um, Run was in Hellgate Prison and stuff from Mm. Halloween Horror Nights 14. It was awesome. And then to get to see all the icons in one go. That was... That was one of my favourite things ever. It was just so cool. And this year's going to be that same thing, but to the next level by the Mm. sounds of it. Mm Mm-hmm. So exciting. (sighs) Not going to be there. Yeah, these guys guys know how to pull our heartstrings. It's... Mm -hmm. it's yeah, seeing HHN Lights, the the tribute store, and oh my gosh, seeing all those icons in there, I guess, except for Chance, I was just like, oh man, I need to go. I need to go. How do I get there? I'm like, I'll drive. I don't care. I'll drive. <laughs> and oh, Isn't Chance man. still sitting in the prop store? Probably. <sighs> yeah. She was yeah, for a I long time. I haven't been there in a little bit. Nicole, how many Horror Nights have you been to? Uh, since 2026. 20, right. Yeah, so, so 26 like to 29. Yeah, so perfect. Then this will be your year to kind of really acquaint yourself with the history of Halloween Horror Nights then. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited because, you know, I've I've read up, you know, just really dug into it and I've heard so much about it. And now just being able to go see that, it's going to be kind of like a perfect little bow. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. Oh, I am so pumped. jealous. It's still going to be interesting to see if COVID has an effect. I don't want to bring a downer on it, but it's still going to be interesting to see if COVID does have yeah. an effect on it this year. Yeah, and see, that that's the thing, just how, how the parks are. Um, pretty much it seems like the only ones that are, I mean, 
in a perfect world if you were vaccinated and not wearing a mask, you know, where they say, um, but I mean, that's pretty much a free for all for everybody. Yeah. It's, it's just the staff members. So even, you know, how they were saying um, HHN light, I didn't get to, to see that, but um, how they were saying they're going to wear a mask over their, their outfit yeah. and kind of blended in. Um, I don't even know if there's going to be any of that because um, outdoor TMs, they, they don't have to wear them or certain outdoor, I think still food service does. Um, but, but when it comes to, to indoor, we still have two and a half more months. So yeah. I just, I, I don't know. I don't even know if it will be really any different. I, I, I feel like it's going to be a full blown event. I, I don't yeah. know, but just from what, what I've seen it, it feels like it's headed that way for so sure. The only thing that makes me disagree ever so slightly with you is the comment in little things by Seth about the annual pass holder free ticket only being used on was it tuesdays and wednesdays or something like a really yes, weird time that for, was one of my issues yeah that i wanted to talk about a really strange time like they're obviously really limiting pass holders from using that ticket at a, like at it a, might be a capacity thing yes at a non-peak yeah. time i'm also hearing that team members may be blacked out from the entire event this year oh wow huh See, and I, I haven't heard, so far what I heard was HHN was included for team members. I think maybe just the first and the last week or something, maybe like Halloween, I don't know, the Halloween week. Um, so I'll, I'll keep you guys updated as I hear. We we haven't seen um, we haven't seen the schedule yet. And yeah. it, as I've heard, it seems like uh, TMs will, will be able to go, maybe at minimum have the preview night, but... Um, yeah, I'm. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I think it, it. It is going to be interesting. I hope it doesn't. But well, to be honest, I don't give a because <laughs> I'm, <not, laughs> I'm not there. To be fair, but you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, I feel you. Though. Um, I, from from a point of view of a Halloween Horror Nights fanboy and a fan of Universal, I want even though I'm not going to be there, I want their thirtieth event to be the success it deserves oh, to be. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was 100%. the thing from last year. That it, achievement. It, it is such a celebration of one of the best events in the world. Yes. And the thing that I love at Universal more than anything else, and whether I'm there or not, I still want it to be, because you still want it to be a success, because the success then breeds a, a mentality going into the next mm-hmm. year and knowing that I'm coming next year, then hopefully, you know, they they want to, this is what we did last year, we need to outdo what we did last year mm-hmm. and and that's good for for us going next year so Mm -hmm. any other issues chris was that you said no i thought it was a bummer those tickets uh being those days yeah but then on the plus side i'm not a pass holder uh a premiere you're not so it doesn't bother me like that i just think it's uh, they'll not like that very much and to be fair i think you can look at it two different ways as a pass as a premier pass holder because you go oh you're making me go during the week right and then you go, oh, they're making me go during the week when it's quieter. Mm. So it's like, True. yeah, yeah it's but it's a lot you know? more difficult. Like I put myself, you know, in those shoes and it's time off. Yeah. yeah like we normally do trips yeah. Friday to Sunday, right? We can leave, get there in a couple hours and enjoy, you know, when I have to kind of change things around to, you know, a Tuesday or any other day in the week, time off. Mm-hmm. scheduling, all that kind of stuff. Now, is it better during the week? Sure. Course, yeah. I'd love to do it during the week, but sometimes, you know, it's not as easy to do that. Mm-hmm. But I suppose that's where I come at it, or Tracy and I come at it from a different perspective, because when we're coming over, it's a vacation. So mm. every, day is yeah. a, every day is a weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas you guys are locals going, obviously you've got work and or school or whatever it might be. You know, it's not that easy. So, mm. yeah, but you can understand. I mean, they've tried to push certain things over the last few years to to push people away from the weekends and more into the weekdays just to try and spread the crowds out a little bit, haven't they? Because weekends got ridiculous, you know, up in the price of express passes, up in the price of weekend tickets to try and push people out into those less crowded days. And rather than it being rammed on a weekend and quiet during the week, just to try and spread it out so there's moderate crowds through the whole thing. I guess the only real issue there is that it's one of the two selling points of a premier pass over preferred. Right, you yeah. have your express after four. Four, mm. yeah. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then four you have o'clock. your Horror Nights ticket. So that's when I was a premiere. I was definitely calculating that premiere ticket as a value add to yeah. the ticket. Yeah, yeah. Or to the pass. 
Um, we ended up stopped doing, you know, stop stopping the premier pass just because it, that ticket wasn't as valuable, valuable to us because we were using, um, Russia fear passes. Right. So, yes. you know, it's like, Hey, we don't need that ticket. We're going to be making a trip going X amount of days. And is it really worth for us to have this? And that's kind of where that went into play. Yeah, so that, that's why I look at it from, this is a pretty important part of that pass. And now I'm limited to these days. So, mm. you know, the I thing is that. like, you've kind of just said it there. Is it though? Really? If you're a massive Halloween horror nights fan, you're going to buy a multi-night ticket. So that free yes. ticket doesn't really make that much difference. Like who's only going to, if you're an annual pass holder, and you're going to go to Halloween Horror Nights because there's no casual Halloween Horror Nights fans. There's not someone who's like, oh, I just go once and that'll do, right? If you're a Horror Nights fan, you are uh, going to... I think to- there are. Uh, I, I think maybe there are. The I think there are people that go. Yes. yes. And, and I, I know a lot of people that go to Horror Nights for one night and Ooh. they're just casual park goers. Please tell me you're and not like, friends oh. with these people. No, we had to, <laughs> I had to take them off Facebook and everything once Good, I, I found that out. <laughs> but these people do exist out there. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of it, too, is people saying, hey, you love Stranger Things. Let's go this year. And you get your buddy who loves Stranger Things and maybe isn't really into other types of horror. And it's it's kind of an intro. Yeah. Um, you know, so that there's just different. Like, I, I, I agree with you, Chris, where it is different levels of, um, you know, people figuring out the event and, you know, maybe seeing if they want to come back and they only okay, commit yeah. to one day and then they end up being like us who I think our very first event were like, okay, well, we need a season pass because we're not, we're not yeah. through here. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe you who knows? Don't understand. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this could also be the start of uh, maybe phasing out that ticket altogether. Mm-hmm. I mean, they don't really need to promote Horror Nights through putting it inside a premiere pass. No. Mm-hmm. Right. Maybe they'll add some other perk or benefit to replace that um, going forward. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think they even want those people going with that ticket. Right. No. I'd mm-hmm. rather sell a full price ticket. I'd rather sell, you know, a pass to go X amount of days in there than including it in there and saying, here's a perk. It, it hurts them more mm-hmm. than I think helps them. Yeah. Well, exactly what you said. I actually messaged them, I think on Twitter or something saying, Hey, um, I plan on getting a season pass. Can we use this as a credit versus just a one night ticket? Cause I, I know for a fact, I'm not going just one day. Yeah. Um, so if, if that was maybe a, a discount on a season pass, that would, would be cool. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, would, it would sweeten the deal for me for yeah. sure. Like even if but, they didn't necessarily give you the price of the ticket and just said, look, we're prepared to credit you I have 40, mm-hmm. 40 bucks. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, right, that's fair done. enough. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. You're still getting that value out of there. Yep. Yeah. And then they're also upselling you and you're spending more money. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You're more exactly. likely to do it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Which fine. Take my money. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. I mean, that's that's the MO of Horror Nights. Just right. take it all. <laughs> Let's Honestly. be honest. When we came over the weekend, I don't know how much we dropped total on Horror Nights between the two of us. It was a lot. If you... I don't believe you. You know every penny we spend. <laughs> Well, let's say we did Unmasking the Horror. We did a private RIP tour. We did Scare Actor Dining. We did um, Two Nights with Express. Three Nights with Express. Mm. So we did four nights total. So, yeah, we, we, uh, we spent a fair bit of money on Horror Nights that year. <laughs> I mean, just merch alone, you can spend a fair bit of money. Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to get the stink eye from Alexa until she finally grasped the concept. <laughs> Stop. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's one of those events that will consume your entire check. Uh, because yep. it's, just, just direct deposit into Universal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> because it is that thing that for the most part, that merch, those houses, that event, it's that season and you'll never see it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, It's gone. It's not like you go once, oh, and I'm such a Harry Potter fan, I want some Hagrid stuff. Oh, I didn't get it. I didn't get what I wanted. Well, we'll just get it next time. Yeah. You go back for Horror Nights next time, and it's all new merch and all new stuff, and it's an all new mm-hmm. event. So you've got to, if you want that stuff, really get it there and then. So, yeah, mm-hmm. you could spend a fortune. I mean, I, we could have spent a fortune. I didn't. No. <laughs> but we could have done. Like, just in Ghostbusters merch alone. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, but we didn't. No, we're good. Cool. Right. I guess that's going to bring us to the end of the show. Nicole, thanks for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Having thanks for having me on, guys. Having yeah. someone on the show actually goes to the parks regularly. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll do it just for you guys. I uh, know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, we are going to end with another listener submitted at Universal Is, and this one comes from Daniel Livingstone. And of course, if you want to be involved, all you've got to do is drop us an email letting us know what, well, not just an email. There are many other ways. You can send it to us via Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, however you want. Just get it to us, um, letting us know what you think Universal Is in three words or less. And Daniel says, Universal Is like nowhere else. See you next week, everyone. Guess that wraps things up for another unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. You guys did all right. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest, keyword UUO Podcast. Listen and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or anywhere podcasts are found. You can find our blog at uuopodcast.com. Send us your spews, which Lou gets your poo recordings, questions, or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Check out our friends, the theme park duo, and our awesome sponsors, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company. So, until next time, don't give up your day job. Say cheese. See you later.